Good morning, Park Hill Church. My name is Scott Curran. I'm the embedded church planter here, and this is uh, Wednesday, April 8th of our Park Hill Daily Videos. We've been walking through the lectionary, um, following the scriptural narrative to give us a basis and a focus for every single day of the week. And this is Wednesday of Holy Week. And Holy Week has come to us at a very unprecedented time in history. Um, we are experiencing the life of Jesus, his last week of his life, leading up to his death on the cross and his resurrection. And we're experiencing this as a global pandemic sweeps across the globe. And I can't help but think of the story of John Doan, which is very similar to our, our story today. Um, John Doan was a man well acquainted with grief and sorrow and misery. He was um, a 17th century writer and poet who lost his job as a um, lawyer to his angry father-in-law. And years later, after no work, becomes an Anglican priest. But only a year after becoming an Anglican priest, uh, he loses his wife and is left alone raising seven children. Then a couple years later, John Doan is diagnosed with the, bu the bubonic plague in the year 1623. Um, he had noticed that spots had been developing all over his body. He actually ended up having uh, typhus instead of the bubonic plague, but he was still fighting for his life as death swarmed and engulfed his surrounding town. Lying in his bed, he could hear the church bells ringing, counting off each death every single day. He had actually thought that in his condition that his friends um, had told people that he was dead and that these bells were for him, but it was actually, he realized, for his neighbor. Um, but what he did come to realize was that, no, no, these bells may not be signaling his immediate death, but they were a reminder of his imminent death to come no matter what. And I've been thinking that, about that as sirens from ambulances drive by um, people are being reminded of those who are being carried off um, with a deadly disease, but also um, that those sirens one day will come for us. And it is a part of the human condition to die. Um, and John Doan, like us, went through the process of asking these questions that come to mind when we start to experience suffering at a very deep and real level. Those questions that come to us when we are experiencing grief and loss is, why me? Why, why my family members or my friends or my loved ones? Why would God even let this happen? Is, is God punishing us? And what I've come to realize very recently, actually, is that the Bible rarely addresses uh, the questions of the cause of suffering or why do we suffer? Um, but rather, it spends most of its time addressing the question, to what end? To what end are we suffering? I mean, we see it in the book of Job. Uh, God takes full re responsibility for running the universe. But he doesn't, but he doesn't care about, uh, sorry, God takes full responsibility for running the universe. But he cares more about how we respond to suffering uh, than the, the actual cause of suffering. So in our passage today, but to the question, what end? We see in the book of Job that God takes full responsibility for running the universe. But what he cares about more is how we respond to our suffering. Do we see suffering as pointless pain, or do we see it as pain that can be redeemed? And our passage today comes from the book of Hebrews. Uh, leading up to the passage, the author writes about all those who have come before us in the faith um, and how they are great examples. And some of those people, actually all of them, experience suffering. And some were saved from their suffering. Some were redeemed out of their suffering in their life, and others were not. And it's toward the end of that list where we see all those people who uh, did not get saved from their suffering. And we read this. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. 
They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins, goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Suffering is something that many in the family of God will become acquainted with in their life. But our sufferings are not meant to be wasted. In suffering, God meets us and points us to something far better than ourselves. And this is where our passage today in the lectionary it comes to us. It's Hebrews chapter 12. On the coattails of chapter 11 in this long list, uh, we read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those who were rescued from their sufferings and those who actually died in their suffering. So, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is where John Donne found his suffering being redeemed. And this is where we can find our suffering being redeemed. It says that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Jesus didn't put on a fake smile to pretend that he was happy while he was suffering. Jesus endured real suffering in real time. But he had a joy set before him. The joy of resurrection. The promise, the hope uh, that this suffering is not the end, and that God actually has the final say over suffering. But we were reminded um, that this joy is far greater than our present suffering, and our world is experiencing real suffering. And we should never, ever ignore that suffering. But we have a hope that goes before us. Jesus our hope, the pioneer, the one who blazes the trail for us in hope. Um, and he's also with us in our sufferings. He's experienced suffering before us, and he's also with us in our sufferings. And so Park Hill Church, be encouraged today that Jesus has gone before you in suffering, and that he's also present with you in suffering. And that as we wait for the dawn to break the darkness that we are experiencing in our world. Jesus is with us to be the light for us and for others so that we can lead others out of the darkness as well. Be blessed today, Park Hill Church, and have a great rest of your day.